this thought, this series on building a thriving prayer life. Amen. Somebody say a thriving prayer life. We don't want one of them stale, stagnant prayer lives. We want a thriving prayer life because we serve a God who is ever evolving. Uh, We serve a God who's so much bigger than our understanding. It will take eternity for us to get the fullness of who he is. And eternity has no beginning and no end. So really, we'll never understand fully who our God is. Our prayer lives ought to reflect the magnificence of our God. Hallelujah. And prayer is where God reveals himself to us. God reveals his will to us. God reveals his plans to us. So our prayer life cannot be stale. It cannot be stagnant. We have to understand that prayer is not just getting on my knees asking God for this or asking God for that. But prayer is me positioning my mind and my will to know the will of God. God is me positioning myself and turning down my plate and turning down my desires and what I want and what I will and taking on his will. Prayer is me dying to myself daily and taking on the mind of Christ every single day. Amen. We want to have a thriving prayer life. We're still in Matthew chapter 6. Verse 9, Matthew 6 and 9. And it reads, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Amen. This is the pattern that Christ has left us to prayer. It's not for us to repeat, but it's for us to understand. It's not so much about the words, it's more so about our understanding. Amen. Tonight we want to deal with our third portion of this series, uh, which is that phrase, hollow be thy name. Come on, somebody say that with me. Hollow be that name. I pray that by the time we are done tonight, that takes on a totally different life in your prayer life. That those words, those four words will take on a life of its own in your life. Hallowed be thy name. Last week, we looked at God's address. We, we dealt with the phrase, which art in heaven. We, we dealt with uh, his placement, his vantage point, his view, which literally should have shifted our understanding of the sovereignty and the power of God. We talked and shared about the vastness of God's glory, the expansiveness of God's reach. We took our understanding of God and magnified it, magnified him to being so much more than we could ever know or even imagine. We could ever understand. We learned that, yes, God is our father, but God is holy. He is our father, but God is above us. He's apart from us, and he sees all. Remembering the sovereignty of God when we pray causes us to naturally utter, hallow be thy name. Within the Lord's Prayer, there are six petitions. There are six things that Jesus asks he includes in this pattern of prayer. The first three relates to God's glory in God's will. Those requests are, hallow be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. The last three petitions that Christ included in this pattern of prayer relates to our gains and our well-being. They are, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. The principle that Jesus was trying to teach the disciples then and is trying to teach us now is that 
when we pray, it should always be God first and people second. We should always pray in the order of his will, then our will. It's okay for you to make your request known. But in prayer, our priority ought to be his will first, then our will. Amen? Jesus said, Lord, if it be your will, let this cup pass for me. But not my will. Let your will be done. It's all right to tell them what you want. It's all right to call them like, the, like grandma and them used to say on the main line and tell them what you want. But your priority ought to be his will, then your will. See, we get down in prayer and we try to make it our will, then his will. See, we try to make his will our will. Jesus shows us by the way he ordered these petitions, these asks, these requests, how we should posture ourselves in prayer. God first people second. If we are ever going to build a thriving prayer life, we can never confuse this order of God first and people second. To understand what Jesus was trying to teach us by using this petition, by using the phrase, hallowed be thy name. We've got to answer three questions tonight. These questions are going to serve as our outline to our teaching. We have to know what the word hallowed means we have to know what God's name is, and we have to know how to hollow his name. There's three things that we have to know if we're really going to understand this phrase and this part of our prayer life. What the word hollow means, what is God's name, and how do we hollow his name? The word hollow really is an out-of-date English term that means to make holy or to mean or means to make separate. The word hollow is used to separate God's name from what is common or ordinary. The aim of Jesus when he instructs his disciples to pray in this manner was that for them to count and treat the name of God differently. The aim was for them to set his name apart, to set his name above any other name. To understand this, we have to really pay attention to the structure of this text. Matthew 6 and 9 and 10, it says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For years, Pastor Wright has done an awesome job expanding our understanding of this principle of on earth as it is in heaven. He's done a great job of drilling it into us that we want God to operate and to move. We want his will to be made manifest on earth as it is in heaven. We want God's name to be hallowed. We want his kingdom to come. We want his will to be done on earth just like it is in heaven. For us to get this understanding, we have to know how God's name is hallowed in heaven. We got to know how his name is set above. We got to know how his name is reverenced. We have to know how his name is honored in heaven so that we can understand how that plays out on earth. Amen? Uh, see, in heaven, according to Isaiah 6 and 3, angels cry out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. The worship in heaven never ceases. It never ends. Revelations 4 and 8 says, day and night, they never cease to say holy, 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 Lord God almighty, who was and is to come. Come on here. All day long, they reverence, they honor, they adore God in his name. Revelation 5 and 13 says, let us know every creature in heaven joins in. Everybody in heaven participates in hallowing his name. Revelation 5 and 13, let us know every creation in heaven joins in saying to him, 
who sits on the throne. And unto the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. That is the scene in heaven. God's name is constantly being hallowed. His name is constantly being honored. His name is constantly being made holy. It's constantly being set above and apart in unceasing, never-ending worship. That is the picture. That is the scene in heaven. The question tonight is, what is the scene on earth? What, 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 does, what, what does it look like on earth? What, what kind of honor? What kind of adoration? What kind of uh, uh, adoration? And uh, how do we set apart his name on earth? God says through Isaiah, in Isaiah 52 and 5, that continually all day my name is despised. The scene on earth is much different than the one in heaven. In heaven, God's name is revered. It's adored. His name is worshiped without ceasing. But on earth, his name sometimes is thrown around like it's nothing. Sometimes his name uh, is talked about and mentioned sometimes as if it's powerless. Religion in most cases tries to remove the power of his name. Because religion tries to put God in the prison of our own understanding. Religion can try to take the power of his name. To pray hallowed be your name means to ask God to let his name be worshipped. Let his name be exalted. Let his name be adored just on earth just like it is in heaven. It should be our desire that God moves so in the earth that people see past us, see past our efforts, see past our services, that they see past our church and our buildings and see him and say hallowed be his name. We ought to live a life so that people see past flesh and able to see in the spirit and say, God, I got to exalt the God of Deacon Slaughter. I got to exalt the God of Deacon Northfleet because the life that they live, hollow be his name. Should be our desire that God moves so in the earth. That people see past us, see past our efforts and see him. See, we block sometimes the hollowing of his name when we try to bring glory to us rather than him. I, I block the hollowing of his name when I make things about me and not about him. I block the hollowing of his name when I allow you to worship me, allow you to praise me, and I don't give his glory back to him. I block the hollowing of his name when I allow you to think that I'm so good and I'm so great and that I'm this and I'm that. No, it is in him that I'm able to do anything. It is him that gives me the ability to do anything. It is him that I have the understanding that I have. We can block the hollowing of his name when we try to build our own. Should not be our desire to build our own name. But we should be building his name or showing people who he is that he, so that he could build his name on the earth just like it is in heaven. Hallow be his name. It should be our desire in everything that we do that his name be established. Should be his, our desire and everything that we do that his name be adored. Not my name, but his name. Amen. We fail to hollow his name when our focus is on ourselves and not on him. This ministry can fail to hollow his name when we feel like we got here because of what we did. We got here because of what we understood. No, it was in him. It was in his following in being obedient to what he told us to do that we're able now to walk at a level of abundance. It's him, not us. When we try to take credit, 
when we try to boast in our own abilities, we prevent the hollowing of his name in the earth. Listen, don't get me wrong now. I'm not saying that you don't take credit for the sacrifices that you make. One thing I can't stand is just people who are just so humble till they just make you see. <laughs> Woo, you the bond. You son, that son. That. Oh, God. Oh, God. It was, it was God. It wasn't me. Girl, you know you would have been practicing the mirror all day, all the run. It's <laughs> nothing wrong with you accepting and appreciating the appreciation of your sacrifice. People come up to me all the time, Pastor, that was a great word. That was a great word. Da, 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 da. I can accept that. You know why? Because I know what it took to get that word. I, I know how I had to pray to get that word. I know how I had to study to get that word. I don't just stand up here and say, Lord, well, here I am. I'm going to open my mouth. Whatever you put in it, Lord God, it's just going to come out. No, I have to work for that word. But when it comes to the results, oh, God, those people were falling out. Da, 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 da. Uh -uh, that ain't got nothing to do with me. Hollow be his name. People getting saved, people, young people want to get baptized, blah, 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 blah. That don't have a thing to do with me. Hollow be his name. You, there's nothing wrong with you accepting the appreciation for your sacrifice, but when it comes to his glory, when it comes to the manifestation that takes place as a result of what you do, that, does have, that has nothing to do with you. That has everything to do with him. And when we confuse the two, we Halt the hollowing of his name. We got to understand that it's in him we move. In him we have our being. It's, it's in him everything that we do, everything I understand. I didn't, I didn't go to college to get this kind of knowledge. I went through hell for this power. Y'all don't, don't, I'm talking to them for it. God is the one that causes me to be who I am. God it's the one that causes you to be who you are. God causes you to operate at the level that you operate. God causes you to have the understanding that you have. And shame on you when you want to build your name and don't want to hollow. You got to hollow his name. The glory that comes as a result of the things that we do and the services that we render, render ought to be hollowing his name. It ought to be making his name big in the earth. It ought to be magnifying his name all over the globe because of the work and the sacrifice of these people. We're responsible for the work, but God is responsible for the result. Everything we do ought to be raising his name in the earth because it is in him that we have the ability to do anything. It is in him that we have the mind to do anything. It is in him we live and move and have our being. When we pray, we have to have a mind that God, God is going to hollow his name. Jesus was teaching the disciples to pray for God, our Father, to hollow his name. Jesus is asking God to make his name great in the earth. When Jesus petitions God, God, hollow your name. He is asking God that he acts in such a way that he visibly demonstrates his power. He visibly demonstrates his holiness. He visibly demonstrates his greatness in the earth so that the earth can mimic and mirror what's going on in heaven. If God, if we get down in prayer and really ask God to just throw his weight around, everybody on the earth won't have a choice but to say, hallowed be thy name. Hallelujah. Jesus is asking God to show himself strong in the earth so that the earth, the praise that's going on in heaven, the adoration that's going on in heaven, the worship that's going on in heaven can also take place here on earth. Listen, no one likes to have his name 
misspelled or name forgotten or mispronounced. Our names are a part of our identity and individual worth. We should value having a good name. That is a blameless reputation. In a similar way, God's name speaks of his identity. It speaks of his character, his actions. When David says, he guides me in the path of righteousness. Why? For his name's sake. There was a lot of things that God did for us. He did it for us for his name's sake. Y'all ain't helping me. He, he pulled you out of it before his name's sake. That glory could be brought to his Name. He protected you for his name's sake. He provided for his name's sake. Jesus removes the focus from us and turns our attention to God. It is about him. It is about his holiness. It is about his work in the earth. Jesus taught us to begin our prayers by recognizing the God to whom we pray. He's our Father. He's in heaven. Hallow be his name. He is a loving Father who invites us into his presence. He genuinely cares for us. God is holy. He's worthy. He's, he's worthy of all the honor and praise. And if we are to have a thriving prayer life, our first priority is to pray that the world would see how holy how glorious, how magnificent, how mighty, how powerful he is. Our first priority in prayer is that his name be established. Our first priority in prayer is that his name be strengthened. Jesus is teaching us to pray that God's name be established on earth just like it is in heaven. I don't know about you, but I want his name to be established. I want his name to be made strong. I want his name to be magnified in earth just like it is in heaven. If his name is established, crime and demonic activity will cease. Y'all ain't gonna tell. If his name is established, that sickness that keeps you up all night would dissolve. If his name be established we can walk and live in the fullness of the kingdom if we're going to have a thriving prayer life we have to pray that God would establish his name we have to pray that God hollow his name I dare you in anything that you face that you ask God to hollow his name marriage get a little rocky glow up God hollow your name Make your name big. Make your name strengthen. Make your name established in my relationship. Those children going to act crazy. God, holler your neck. Prove yourself in the earth like you've done in heaven. God, holler your name. If we're going to have thriving prayer lives, we have to pray that God would establish his name. Let your name have the same power on earth as it does in heaven. Hollow your name because we boast in your name. Hollow your name because we believe in your name. Hollow your name because we cast out demons and devils in your name. Hollow your name because our confidence is in your name. Hollow be your name. Jesus is teaching us to magnify the name of the Lord above anything and anybody else. Hollow be your name. We've got to recognize the holiness of God. When we get down on our knees, we have to recognize, we have to articulate. And it's hard. I'm telling you, because he's so holy, words don't even express, you know, who he really is. So, you know, it, it's a journey trying to figure out even what to say about him. God, you're good, but that ain't even good enough. God, you're wonderful. That's not good enough. God, you're magnificent. I'm telling you, sometimes you can get in prayer and you'll never get past his name. We 
you've got to recognize the holiness of God. Jeremiah recognized the holiness of God when he said, no one is like you, Lord. You are great. And your name is mighty in power. Jeremiah said, who shouldn't fear you? When you recognize the holiness of God and the power of his name, we can have the confidence that David had when he went to fight Goliath. He didn't have any armor. David didn't have a spear. David didn't have a sword. But David had confidence that God was going to hollow his name. David told Goliath, you come at me with a sword and a shield and a javelin, but I come. Hollow be his name. I come in his name. God getting ready to show up because I came in his name. He's going to hollow his name. We ought to be praying that God hollow his name so that whatever we face, whenever we come, whatever comes against us has to bow to the power of his name. It's not your might. It's not you. It's the power of his name. When I go in prayer, I go in his name. When I come at demons and devils and spiritual warfare, I come in his name. It ain't about me. We've got to come in his name because he is going to hollow his name. He's going to prove his name. He's going to make his name be established in the earth. The name of the Lord is a strong tower (laughs) where the righteous run in and are safe. I know we're in Bible study, but look at somebody next to you and say, you're safe. You're safe. He, he, he's caring about his name. I know, I know, I know I don't really want to preach, but I don't care what the government say. You're safe. I don't care that we're going into a recession. You're safe because God is going to hollow. When you know the power of his name, it's, oh God, help me in here. You won't be. I got to calm down. We have to know the power of his name. We can fail to hollow his name when we don't recognize his holiness. When when, when, when we don't see that his name is a mighty power. We block the hollowing of his name. Each and every time that we get in a posture of prayer, we must recognize the holiness of God. We must recognize the sovereignty of God. We must recognize the power of God. And it should be our desire that the world sees and understands the holiness of God. It should be our desire and our our, our aim that our family see the holiness of God. Hallow be your name. Let your name be worshipped on the earth like it is in heaven. Let your name be reverence on the earth like it is in heaven. Let your name be established on the earth like it is in heaven so politicians and people in high places have to bow at the power yes lord of your name see the government wants us to bow to the power of their name but they're getting ready to bow to the power let your name be established the second question that we have to ask and that must be answered is, what is God's name? If we are to esteem his name above anything and everything, we must understand what his name is. When we really understand his name, there will be moments in prayer where we will never get past his name. told you prayer is about God Revealing himself to us. Prayer is about us having a relationship with God, getting to know him. Prayer is about that. So when we really understand the power and the fullness of his name, it's be sometime we'll get stuck in prayer just down there in his name. I, I never got to a petition. I never got to your kingdom come. I just got to your name. <laughs> 
when we understand the power of his name, we won't be able to do anything but hollow it, adore it, set it above, separate it. When we understand. But what is his name? Some call him Jehovah, the self-existing one. Some call him Elohim, the creator. Some call him El Shaddai, the Motai. Breasted one. Some call him Adonai, our master. Some call him El Elyon, the God most high. He is all of that, but let us call him what he calls himself. Yes, Exodus 3, chapter 13. Um, Exodus chapter 3, 13 and 14. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your father has sent me. <laughs> and they asked me, well, what is his name? Moses said, what should I tell him? God said to Moses, tell him I am that I am. Yeah, oh my God. Tell him, tell him I am that I am. <laughs> he says, I am that I am means God just is. He, he, he just is. Ain't no way to explain him. Ain't no way to name him. He's the creator of it all. He's the maker of it all. He's the author of it all. He's the finisher of it all. He sustains life. He gives life. He creates life. He's everything. I am that I am. Everything you need me to be, I am. If you need a provider, I am. If you need a doctor, I am. If you need a lawyer, I am. I am that I am. <laughs> hey, God, in other words, told Moses, don't try to box me in. I am that I am. Whatever your request is, make it known. I am. Said, I am that I am. You can call him what you want to call him. I am. As long as you have the understanding that no matter what you need, whatever you need, whatever you need, he is. He's the answer to any question you got. <laughs> He's the solution to every problem comes your way. I am that I Said I own it all. I, I created it all. I made it all. I'm the owner of it all. I orchestrated it all. I planned it all. I am. Who God? You just I am just a bad, bad, bad boy. He just that bad. He just that good. You just that powerful to be anything you want to be. You're just that great to be anything I need you to be. I can never lack for nothing as long as I got I am. I can never want for nothing as long as I got I am. I can never not be in peace as long as I have the understanding that my father I am that I am. We have to know that his name is above any name because he is holy. He is just. He is righteous. He's our creator. He's our savior. He is our Lord. He is our everything. I mean, how do we even name something like that? You can call him whatever you want to call him in here. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. I am that I am. When we pray, hallowed be thy name, we are asking God to show himself strong in the earth. Lord, let your name be glorified. Hey, hey. Hallowed. Be thy name. Hmm. When we pray, hallowed be thy name, we're asking God to reveal his glory in our lives, in our families, so that somebody would take notice and say, that has to be God. 
People say God works in mysterious ways. No, he don't. Because if it was mysterious, we wouldn't know it was God. He works in his way. <laughs> he works in his way. You couldn't do it. It couldn't be done in human, uh, by human hands. He did it in his way. Wasn't nothing mysterious about it. God took the mystery out of it because he's the only one who could do it. We have to pray that God show himself strong in the earth and that others may bow and worship the holiness of his name. But we are also, when we say, hallowed be thy name, and when we have that understanding, we are also making a commitment to live our lives in a way that brings honor to God's name. If God's name is going to be hallowed in our lives, there should be evidence of that in your walk. If God's name is going to be adored, set above, set apart, we ought to see evidence of that in the way you treat your brothers and sisters. We ought to see evidence of that when you go through trials and tribulations. If his name is going to be magnified in your life, we ought to see evidence in our lives. Our lives ought to speak of the holiness of his name. If God's name is really hollowed in our life, we would talk about God respectfully. We wouldn't just treat his name like, oh, anything. We wouldn't just throw his name around anywhere. We would reverence his name. We want to use his name in careless fashions. We reverence his name. Whenever we use his name, we ought to use it with honor and expectation. Whenever we use his name, we ought to expect something to happen. You, you shouldn't just get down and pray and say, Lord, I thank you, Lord. Da, 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 da. Whenever you put his name to work, you ought to expect. Something to break, something to change, something to be altered, something to be made sense of, something. You ought to expect something. If God's name is going to be hollowed in our life, we have to give God his glory. We have to be intentional about giving God credit for the blessings that he's called us to live in. We've got to be intentional about giving God credit for the ability that he has caused us to have. We've got to be intentional about giving God the glory for the ways that he's made. If God's name is going to be hollowed in our lives. We have to obey God. Totally. See, when you don't obey God totally, you are blocking the hollowing of his name. When you don't obey God totally, you don't really believe in the power of his name. Your obedience ought to speak to the hollowing of his name. No, we are right doing what God says partially. As long as he don't tell us to do something that's going to be uncomfortable or to make us look a certain way. We're fine with that, but if we're going to hollow his name, we got to obey God totally, no matter what or how it causes us to look. We don't do that all the time. God gives us chance after chance after chance to get it right, to get it right. Go ahead and do what I said, do it. I do it a little bit, but I ain't going to do it all. Dog, go on, do it. <laughs> but when we do that, it really speaks to what we feel about his name. If God's name is going to be hollowed in our life, we have to trust him completely. Each time we doubt God, we tarnish his name. Having faith is trusting God completely. 
Without faith, it's impossible to please God because a lack of faith means that we doubt God's character. We doubt God's will. Our faith reveals what we really feel about God and his name. When we really believe God totally, when we really have faith in his will, that ought to bring glory to his name. But when we don't and we try to figure things out on our own, that exposes how we really feel about his name. Because he said that I, I am that I am. But you still worried about what you're worried about. But if you had the confidence in his name, you would know that all things are working together for your good. You would have the confidence that whatever is you're facing, whatever is happening, is going to work out for your good. You would have the fulfillment in yourself that even when you don't get to do what you thought you ought to do, God has you right where he wants you to be because I have faith in his name. I am, you know all. Oh, you, you know my end from my beginning. You know when I'm going to start. You know where I'm going to be. You have all knowledge. You are above me. You see everything. You are. I don't have to wrestle with the will of God when I have confidence in his name. Y'all worked me too hard in Bible study. I just can't. It ain't no way in the world that I should have to change clothes to get out of Bible study. <laughs> Hollow be thy name. If we are going to build, if we're going to have Thriving prayer lives. We have to pray that God hollows his name in the earth. Just like it is in heaven. We can't just pray that, but we have to have a responsibility to not, uh, to not allow our actions to diminish or tarnish the magnitude of his name in the earth. Sometimes we can carry on so. That people who come in contact with us don't want nothing to do with our God. When it should be the very opposite. The way you interact with your brothers and sisters, the way that you interact with strangers, the way that you handle people ought to cause people to have an interest as to why you are, how you are, the way that you are. Your life ought to be hollowing his name. But sometimes we're the cause of his name not being magnified at the level that it should be in the earth. You cussing people out in Walmart. <laughs> Ain't that the sister go to Calvary? <laughs> That's the brother go to Paul Wright Church. <laughs> when we pray and have the understanding that holla be thy name, when we get down and have a thriving prayer life, we should want and desire for God's name to be established in the earth. Just like it is in heaven. We ought to want the weight of his name to carry the same weight that it does in heaven right here on the earth. When we have that understanding, it's changed the way we pray, but it'll change the way we live. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody stand on your feet and say, hallow be your name. Hey, in my life, in my body, in my marriage, with my children, in my finances, hollow be your name. Let your name be established in every area of my life. Let your name be established, oh my God, in this ministry like never before. Let your name be established in the city of Sanford, that city officials and city commissioners have to bow to the will of your name. Let your name be established established in this nation that President Biden, President Trump, President Obama, President so-and-so, President Donald Duck, everybody got to bow to your will. Let your name be 
established. Let your name be strengthened that every day of our life will bring glory to your name. Give us the understanding in our hearts. Give us the will in our minds, Lord God, to hollow your name in the way that we walk, in the way that we talk, in the way that we interact with ourselves, in the way that we serve. Help us, Lord God, to hollow your name in the earth that somebody will take notice that you are God and beside you there is no other. God, let somebody look at our life and notice that you are the one that makes the difference. Let somebody look at our lives and notice that it is in you that we live. It is in you that we move. It is in you that we have our being. It's in you that our ability is, is what it is. It is you that we live at the level that we live on. Thank you, God, because you are hollowing your name in my life. You are making your name big. You are making your name grand. You are making your name established. You are strengthening the power and the holiness of your name in my life. Hallow be thy name. Like the angels, Lord God, we join in with them right now saying that you're holy. You're holy. You're holy. You are God. You were God yesterday. You are God today and you'll be God tomorrow. You are I am that I am. You was yesterday. You are today and you will be tomorrow. There's no shadow of turning in you. We thank you, Lord God, that you're holy. We thank you, Lord God, that you're righteous. We thank you, Lord God, that you Cover us. Oh my God in the room. Hallow be thy name. Hallow be thy name. Every trial you go through, God is allowed it because He's gonna hollow His name. He's gonna make his name big. He's gonna make his name strong. He's gonna make hey! everything you face. God has allowed it because he wants to strengthen the power of his name in your life. We give you glory tonight, God. Hallelujah. <laughs> we thank you, Lord God, for your will. We thank you, Lord God, for your understanding. We thank you, Lord God, that you're taking us, carrying us into another level of prayer. God, we want to know you. We want to know you, Lord God. We want you to reveal yourself to us. We want you to reveal your will to us. We want you to reveal your way to us so that we don't have to box, Lord God, with your will. But God, we can jump out of your way and directly into your will to fulfill our kingdom assignment here on the earth. Thank you, God, that you mature us. Thank you, God, that you bring us to another level of understanding. Thank you, God, that you care enough about us to take time with us to show us how to pray, how to get in your face, how to build a relationship with you. Thank you, God. We give your name all the honor, glory, and praise. Let everybody come in agreement with it and say amen, amen, amen. amen. and amen. Hallelujah.